I've been an FDM 3D printing guy for years. And I think so are many of you. But today I'm trying resin printing. Resin printing really has a lot of cool benefits. Firstly, you have a lot better resolution than FDM printing. This means you can print a lot of finer details and the whole thing of having curves that are kind of stepped more than actually round is not a problem with resin printing at all. Also, you get way better dimensional accuracy, so parts that have to fit into each other will actually just fit into each other. And lastly is the surface finish. You will get so much more professional looking parts. There's no layer lines at all and I really love that. So I already hear you say, why didn't you try it until now then? Well, first of all, thanks for that question. And the thing is, there's a lot more work that goes into resin 3D printing as opposed to FDM 3D printing. First of all, you need a lot more equipment like a lot, a lot more. Then you have to do a lot more post-processing with the print afterwards. And lastly, there's just a lot more safety considerations with resin printing. I'll get into all of that later in the video. But today we're finding out if resin 3D printing is worth it. I'm figuring this out from the eyes of a relative beginner. So I'm setting the whole thing up, printing something, cleaning up all the mess, and in the end deciding if it's worth it for me and maybe also for you. First, you're gonna need a lot of stuff. Of course, you'll need your 3D printer, but then you'll also need your wash station. And after that, you'll need your cure station. Also, there's some other stuff that isn't needed, but really nice to have. I also got some isopropyl alcohol, gloves, tongs, and a lot of kitchen towels. Lucky for me, Haygear sent me their new Reflex RS Turbo. So big shout out goes to them. Last year at Form Next, I already looked at a bunch of different resin 3D printers. And honestly, Haygear's was the one brand that I really loved the most. It was just their overall feel, the manufacturing quality, and how they thought about the whole ecosystem that I really liked most. Just touching your products, you can really feel the quality. But now that I have everything, let's get printing. The setup process was super easy. The printer and all the other devices connect to the app so you can remotely monitor them. And I just set up the printer, loaded up one of the example prints that Hager sent me, loaded up some of the resin, and then pressed print. I have to say, for me, it's weird not to be able to see the print as it's printing because for the first little bit, it's all just still in the resin and you can't see anything. So you kind of just have to believe or trust, I guess. Also make sure you have a well-ventilated area since these resins do give off quite a bit of fumes. Personally, I opened my windows and mainly printed overnight, but in an ideal scenario, you have a fully different room where you can do all of this and just walk in to grab your prints and not spend too much time in there. But now comes the part of resin 3D printing that, at least for me, is a little bit annoying. It's all of the post-processing. Whereas the FDM print would now pretty much be done with the resin print, now first of all, you have to wash it and then you have to cure it. And since there's still a lot of toxic resin dripping around everywhere because it's not cured yet, you really have to pay attention. So definitely safety is key. Definitely wear gloves and even eye protection. You really don't want to mess around with this stuff. Maybe even use a respirator if you can feel the fumes getting to you. After letting a bit of the resin drip off, I eventually dumped it into the wash station. This one's filled with either isopropyl alcohol or some other resin away substance that you can use. And this is used to clean off most of the still liquid resin. Once that's all washed away, you let it dry off and after that, put the whole print into the curing station. You can either remove the supports before or after. As far as I know, there's no correct way. What I really appreciate about Haygears is that all of their stuff is connected. Not only can you send stuff from the slicer directly to the printer through either LAN or the cloud, but you can even send the sliced file to your wash station and your cure station. So I don't have to think about, hey, how long should this be washed? How long should this be cured? The slicer just figures it out and I don't have to deal with any of this, which for me as a beginner is honestly great. So I think you can see that the whole process is a lot more work, but right now I'm grabbing my first print and I hope that it was all worth it and I'm really excited for it. Looking at the first prints, I was honestly just so impressed. Just the quality of the whole thing and also the accuracy. I mean, this was just a test print kind of thing, but just looking at it, it looks so nice. And also to just kind of compare, I 3D printed the same thing with FDM so you can see the differences. The first big thing is obviously is that there is no layer lines, neither on the sides nor on the top. It just, you know, looks like an injection molded part, which is honestly so cool. 
The one thing that I can still see are these little points where the supports were on, but apparently those you can just sand off. Other than that, it's the sheer detail. The text on the resin print is just razor sharp, whereas on the FDM print, it's not even readable. It's just barely there at all. And the last thing which I think is really cool are the tolerances. Whereas the resin print fits perfectly into all of the tolerances, even basically down to 0, 0.0, the FDM print gets stuck at even the highest one in this test. And I think with FDM, you usually need 0.2 or even 0.4 of a tolerance to get things fit into each other right perfectly. So all in all, I have to say I'm really happy with my first print. The differences in quality are just night and day. And this is so much better, so much more professional looking. So yeah, I'm really excited to print more with this. Getting into printing my own models, I of course had to look into the slicer from Hay Gears, which is called Blueprint Studio. And honestly, I found this pretty easy to manage. Of course, there's still lots of like deep functions and all the stuff there that I haven't even scratched the surface off yet. But for me as a super beginner, it was easy to just kind of throw things in there. There's even an auto function that basically does all the stuff for you because it also rotates the stuff at a good angle, which is usually nice for resin printing and generates all the supports. So this was a great starting point and yeah, generally really easy to use for me. One thing that I didn't show before was all of the mess that all of this makes. It's important to have somewhere where you can drip resin. I use this IKEA bin to work over and just throw stuff in. Definitely be sure not to get any resin into your clothes or your carpet or anything else you wanna keep, like your eyes. The nice thing with all of this mess is once you're done, you can just put all of it in the open sun and that will cure all of the resin. So you don't need to put it in the cure station or anything. It'll just cure by itself in the sun and then you can safely discard it in the trash. Also the cured resin peels off really nicely of these plastic boxes so it won't stay there forever, you just cure it and then just peel it off. Today let's get back to printing. I wanted to make this step up ring for a camera filter, but the problem is that camera filters have like really fine threads. They're so fine you can't really make them with an FDM printer. So I threw this filter in the printer and the result was amazing. This to me really looks close to an injection molded part. You have the perfect detail on the sides and also on the threads, but I also really love the perfect finish of the top surface. No more layer lines, just one clean product. And while this last part functionally doesn't really make a difference, feeling it, touching it, it just feels good. It makes me happy. <laughs> this is actually one of the improvements of this model specifically. While resin printing is always great at this, Hager's upgraded this RS Turbo with its new amber screen. This gives smoother and even more detailed models while also giving you faster print times. Printing times are an interesting point since I haven't even mentioned that yet. In general, I would say that resin printing is a little bit to a good bit slower than FDM printing, but it really depends on your use case. The really interesting thing is that resin printing pretty much takes the same amount of time to print each layer, no matter how much is on there. So if you're just printing one object or if you're printing 10 objects, it's pretty much the same time. It doesn't work at all like FDM printing where printing 10 objects will probably take almost 10 times as long than just printing one object. Here's a little reference so you have a concrete idea. Printing this one assembly test that I showed before on an FDM printer takes about 30 minutes. Then again, on the resin printer, it takes two hours and 44 minutes. So you can see there's a big difference here. But as I kind of said before, if you put nine of these assembly tests on one build plate, all of a sudden the FDM 3D printing takes three hours and seven minutes. Whereas the resin printer, it takes a little bit longer, but it's three hours and 20. So it does really depend on how you're using or utilizing the space. And also I think with a much, much finer quality, it's okay if resin printers take a little bit longer. And the whole subject of assemblies and tolerances is a really, really big advantage of resin printers over FDM 3D printers, especially if you're using them for actual functional parts and not making, you know, models or figurines. As I showed before with my 3D printed filter ring with the super fine threads, this is something that couldn't really be done otherwise. Also, I wanted to make these screws and normal screw threads. I tried to make M8 screws and really they didn't fit really well on FDM printing. Yes, with a lot of tolerance and offsets of I think 0.2 or even 0.4 millimeters, you could make them work eventually. 
but you really have to work around this to make the tolerances work. On the other hand, with the resin printer, I just chucked in the normal M8 style threads as they're supposed to be, as they would be made out of metal, and they just worked flawlessly, no problem. This really shows the difference to me, and it's a whole different level of precision, which is really nice and also shows in the end quality of the parts. Besides the quality difference, it can also save you a lot of time in prototyping. There's no printing the whole thing five times, checking out which tolerances will finally fit together perfectly. With resin printing, it just kind of works as it's intended. So after having gone through the process of printing a couple of times, I can say I really love and enjoy this printer. Hey Gears to me uses kind of what I call the Apple approach, or in 3D printing terms, it might be closest to Bamboo Lab. You can really see they made the ecosystem work perfectly together. The machines are beautifully designed and engineered, and I wish I could transport through video how good this hinge feels. All in all, they have a great workflow with everything working together well. But everything also works best if you use their resin as well. So this is more an ecosystem that works perfectly together and not a DIY open source tinker toy. But the benefit is everything just really works and effortlessly at that. So make sure you know what you're getting yourself into if you choose Hager specifically. Perfectly, I love this, it just works TM approach to everything. I don't have to think about everything, things just, you know, work. And yes, I'm spending a little bit more money on everything, but also I'm saving a lot of time and headaches, and to me that's definitely worth it. So now it's conclusion time. What does an FDM printing guy think about resin 3D printing? Resin printing clearly is a lot more work than FDM printing but you're also rewarded with results that are just stunning. If you want fine details, precision, or just that professional look, then FDM printing really doesn't stand a chance against resin printing. In my mind, I have to say though, that resin printing is still a bit more of a specialized tool. I don't always need all that precision and quality, so the trade-off sometimes is definitely worth it, but not all the time. It's still kind of hard to go back to FDM printing when you've had a taste of how good things can look, feel, and everything. I don't need it, but I still kind of want it. <laughs> Other than that, I think it really depends on your situation. If you have a dedicated workshop or a space where you can put a resin printer, then by all means, just have one because it's amazing to have. Just in your whatever living room or in your office, I'm not sure if I would set up one of these long-term because of the fumes you'll have to do a lot of cleaning to get most of them out all the time, so then it might not be practical. But if a resin printer is right for you, then I can definitely recommend Hay Gears. So right now you can get the RS Turbo Combo at the early bird price of $1,686. Check out my code in the description to get $50 off your purchase. Also, I get some affiliate kickback, which is really nice. So let me know in the comments down below if you've tried resin 3D printing yet or what you think of it. If you haven't tried it yet, what's keeping you? If you're not done watching cool videos yet, maybe check out this video on how to get your FDM 3D prints to look as smooth as possible. Honestly, it's no competition to resin, but it's a good start. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.